I don't think it would come as a surprise to anyone to hear that Microsoft spies on you, but have you ever wondered how exactly they do that? If you've ever watched a TV police drama and you always see one suspect at one side of the table and the detectives come in with a packet and a piece of paper and they pull it out and they set it on the desk and they say, we know what you did. And even though the suspect is thinking, I clear my history and I surf incognito and I use a VPN, how in the world can they know that? Well, the reason they know that is because of one tiny file hidden on your computer that you're probably using right now and you had no idea that it even existed. Now, before we get too far down the rabbit hole, please understand that Microsoft didn't put this file on your computer specifically to track you or to spy on you. It's actually a tool for you to use in case you need to diagnose a particular problem in Windows and can't figure out what caused it. It secretly tracks everything that happens on your computer. It keeps up with what apps you're running. It keeps up with what websites you go to and how long you spend on them. And basically every other thing that happens on your computer is compiled into this one file. And by default, this is enabled and it goes up to Microsoft and it allows them to quote, track you. This is how programs like Microsoft OneDrive and Edge are able to keep up with what you do from one computer to the other because it reads data from this file. It knows exactly where you left off and it allows you to pick right back up. And again, if you are a professional, this tool is actually pretty invaluable because it allows you to see what was happening at the time of a Windows crash or something like that. But it can also be used against you. And if you're concerned about privacy, you might want to consider turning it off. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And as a bonus, it's easy to turn back on anytime you want. Hey everyone, if you're new to this channel, my name is Scott Merrill. I've been in IT for nearly 35 years and what I do on this channel is Windows tips, tricks, reviews, troubleshooting and more. On this channel, we cover the what, the why, and then the how. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, make sure you check out my video library because I got a ton of content in there that you might enjoy. Also, one of the things I love doing is making PC recommendations for those of you who are looking for a computer, but you really don't know where to start. There's a link in the video description. If you fill that out, I will laser focus and find you exactly the machine you're looking for to meet your budget. It's 100% free and I'm happy to do it. And by the way, thanks DJ for the shirts. I absolutely love them. Now let me tell you what you need to do and then I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first thing we need to do is actually turn off the service that writes information to this file. From what I understand about this file, it cycles every 30 days. So what happened on day 31 has been dropped off. It keeps up with the last 30 days of activity. But what we can do is turn it off completely and then Microsoft won't have any idea what you're doing. And that's one small step towards a little more privacy for you. So from your search bar or the Windows key in the letter R, which is your run box, you can type in the following. You're gonna type in percent local app data percent and then hit enter and then you're going to see this window pop up which is a whole bunch of crap that you're not familiar with that's okay these are hidden files located in your app data folder under your user profile you may need to scroll down just a little bit but you're looking for the folder that says connected devices platform when you find it double click it you're going to have at least one maybe multiple folders it's going to be a string of letters and numbers and if you see multiple folders don't worry about it we'll get to that in a bit what i'm going to look for here is the one that has the latest date on it now in this case it is this folder right here which is from 2025 and if you click on that folder and then you're going to see these three files you're going to see a file called activitiescache.db and if you have your Windows file extensions disabled, uh, you'll only see the words activities cache. That's okay. You're going to see two more files and don't worry about these. These are just temporary files that, that this is what Windows uses to write data to the database file. You're going to see one that is an SHM and one that is a WAL. So now we know where those are located, but what we have to do first is turn off the service that's writing to these files. Now you could try double clicking on this file. It's not going to hurt anything if you try it, but you're probably going to get a window that pops up and says, I don't know how to open this. And that's because the file is actually a database file. So what we have to do is download a program that actually can read that database. And the good news is, is there's a one that's hundred percent free and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So the program that we need is called DB browser for SQL Lite or for some of you in the programming world, you might call it SQL. I've always called it SQL, but for simplicity, we're going to call it SQL. What I want you to do is just open your web browser and type DB browser for SQL Lite. 
and then go ahead and search. Now you're gonna see a handful of links and I'm gonna scroll down here until I see this page right here. This is the HTTPS SQLLightBrowser.org. That's the link you wanna click on. So when you click on that, you're gonna see this page right here. And all this is is just a program that can read that database file and make it make sense. Otherwise, it's just going to be scrambled and you won't be able to read it. But this program actually can. So once you are here, click on the download button at the very top. And that's going to take you to this page right here. Now, depending on which version of Windows you have determines which download you choose. In this case, I'm going to choose the standard installer for 64-bit Windows. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm just going to put it in my downloads folder. And then once the file is downloaded, I'm just going to click on it to run it. Now I may get a warning saying it's an executable file or something like that. The file is completely safe. It's not a virus or anything like that. It's just an MSI is a uh, executable file and Windows says, hey, are you sure you want to do that? I'm going to go ahead and click it and then I'm going to click run. The installation's pretty simple. Just click next. You accept the terms. Click next again and I'm just going to go ahead and check all these boxes and then click next. This just determines where the shortcuts can be placed for the program. You don't have to, but I'm just going to select them all. Click next, leave this next screen default, click next again, and then it's ready to install. Click install. And just like that, the program is installed and you can click finish. Now you will see on your start menu that the DB browser program has been installed, but we don't want to run it that way. So now that the program is installed, we're going to go back to that folder that had the activities uh, database file, and we're going to right click on it. And you're going to select open web. Now that DB uh, database reader may not be listed in here. If not, that's okay. Scroll down and click on choose an app on your PC. Now by default, Windows should take you to the correct folder. Um, which is the program files folder, but if it doesn't from this PC, you're going to double click on the C drive and then you're going to scroll down until you see program files. And then once you're in the program files folder, scroll down to find DB browser for SQL Lite. double click it. And then you'll see two executable files. Select this one right here, which is DB browser for SQL Lite.exe, and then select open. Now you'll see that listed in the uh, list of installed programs on your computer. In this case, we've got that selected. We're going to click always. And now you're going to see what is in this database file. And as you can see here, there is a ton of information that is basically being recorded about you and how you use your Windows PC. None of what's in that database file really matters to you because we're not going to go through and tweak it, but it's important that you see how much data is being collected about what you do and how you do it. So what we need to do is we need to say, stop writing to this file. I don't want to give Microsoft any more information than they already collect about me. But what we got to do first is we got to turn off the service that enables that file. So again, from your Windows run box or your search box, whichever one you want, you're going to type in services.msc. And when you click OK, you're going to see this window come up here. Everything that runs on your computer runs because of a service. That service is basically the ignition switch for any particular thing that happens in Windows. But the good news is, is we can turn off the part that collects the data. So in that services window, we're going to scroll down until we see connected devices platform service. And you can see here, it is automatically running every single time Windows runs. And that is because it is collecting that data. So what we have to do is we have to tell it to stop running every single time Windows runs and stop collecting data altogether. Double click and then you see here that it tells you exactly what it does. It uses a basically the Windows administrative account to uh, run that service. There's also other things about what happens if it crashes, it automatically restarts and all this, that and the other. But from that general tab, just click stop. So what we did is we turned off that service for now. Because right now, if you restarted the computer, it would just restart. We don't want that. So under startup type, you're going to click the drop down box and say disabled. And then once you've done that, click apply. And then you can click OK. So if you go back here now, you'll see that this is the service that 
writes to that database file, again, the one that keeps up with everything that you do, and now we have not only stopped the service, but we have disabled the service. So it's not going to run again until you enable it. This is one step to control your privacy on your computer, but what about your online privacy? If that's important to you, you might want to check out today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Aura. Your odds of winning a lottery jackpot? About 1 in 290 million. But some people still play their favorite numbers every week expecting to win. Your odds of your house burning to the ground? 1 in 3,000. But you pay every year for homeowner's insurance just in case. Your odds of having your identity stolen or being a victim of online crime? 1 in 4. Let me say that again so it sinks in. 1 in 4. And even though you spend all this money every year protecting everything else in the world, what are you doing to protect yourself against becoming a victim of online crime or identity theft? Unfortunately, a lot of people don't think about it until it's way too late. And that's where Aura comes in. And myself being a victim of identity theft in the past, trust me, that's a battle you do not want to fight. Data brokers sell your information to spammers and scammers. Your full name, your address, your phone number, health records, your relatives, it's all out there for the picking. We hear all the time about companies getting hacked and data breaches and all of that. AT&T just recently released that 73 million customer records were released on the dark web. And they recommend using strong passwords, monitor your account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from the credit bureaus. But who has time to do all that? I know I don't, but Aura does. Their system shows me which data brokers are trying to sell my data and then automatically submits opt-out requests for me. They also protect me against hackers who are trying to get into my social media bank accounts, and other personal information. Aura does all of this with just one app. To find out more, sign up for a two-week free trial at Aura.com slash AskYourComputerGuy and find out for yourself what's really out there with your name on it. Okay, so now we have the service turned off and disabled, which means when we restart the computer, it is not going to continue to record everything you do. But what we can do as an added measure of protection is delete those files that have that data stored in them. Now you can try to right click and delete this file, but you may get this error message saying that it can't do it because it's actively running. So we gotta do one more quick step and that's to right click on your taskbar and then go to task manager. Now in the services and processes, we can go up here and search for it and we're gonna type connected. And you can see here, here is the service that is actively running that's preventing us from deleting this file. We can go right here to the connected device platform, right click and stop. And now you can see that one is gone. We can go back to this database file and we should be able to delete it just like that. And also it would be probably a good idea to delete both of these as well. Just like that, they're gone. So remember earlier I told you I was going to show you how to get rid of those other folders in case you have more than one. So in the command line up here, you're just going to go back one folder to the connected devices platform. And here are the other two that I had. You may not have them, but I do. So I'm going to go into each one, double click, and each one of these has their own activities uh, database. So I'm going to select them all and delete. Then I'm going to go back to the connected devices platform, go to the last one, select all and delete. And just like that, all the tracking on my local computer is gone. There is nothing to collect about what I do. And also as an added bonus, Microsoft can't see it because there's nothing there. Now, if you, for some reason, want to turn this back on, for example, if there's a connectivity issue or you really like Microsoft being able to pick up what browser session you had on another computer, you're going to need to turn that back on so that there is data being collected that Microsoft can then use. That's entirely up to you. I personally don't want it. So what we need to do is go back to services.msc. We need to go back to the connected device platform service. We're going to double click it. And then for the startup type, remember we disabled it. You're just going to go and select automatic or automatic delayed start. Either way, both of those will re-enable the service. And once you do that, you're automatically going to start logging everything that you do on your computer again. And again, that's going to allow Microsoft to see whatever it is you are doing on your computer. So you can see it's a super easy fix. All we did is we said, stop tracking, and then we deleted the file that recorded everything we did. But as soon as you re-enable it, it's going to recreate that database, and then Microsoft will then be able to see what you're doing. So the real question you might be asking is, is should I keep this on my computer or not? 
I mean, on the one hand, it is collecting information about what I do every day. And on the other hand, it is a valuable tool. It's like a plane's black box, but for your computer. Your computer professional or yourself are gonna be more easily able to go in and see what happened if a windows crashed or a driver crashed or something like that. So you have to find that fine balance between should I keep it enabled or should I turn it off? That's really entirely up to you. The good news is, is it doesn't hurt to turn it off. And if you start to notice any issues, like I said, with wondering why Microsoft Edge doesn't keep up with your history if you're not logged into the app, that's probably why, because the database file doesn't know what you did, so therefore it doesn't know where to start when you go to another computer. But again, if privacy is important to you, this is one thing you can absolutely do to help mitigate that. And now that we got that done, there is one more little setting that we need to change to make sure that you are absolutely as non-tracked as possible. So what you're gonna do is go into your Windows settings or control panel, and then you're gonna to go to privacy and security on the left-hand side. And under this privacy and security tab, there are a ton of options as far as what can be tracked and recorded here, including your Windows permissions, app permissions, and all of that stuff. What I would definitely recommend is you go through each of these. For example, under Windows general permissions, anything that could possibly track you, turn these options off. And then same with diagnostics and feedback. Make sure you have that stuff off. The diagnostic data, this is clear Microsoft data that has been collected about you. Click on delete there. And then also with app permissions, and this is things like location services, tell it off so you don't have a targeted ads on your location. Basically anything that can be tracked on you, you wanna turn it off. In any of these settings that you don't like, if you have an issue or you changed your mind or maybe you like a website to say, hey, I know exactly where you live and these are the best deals in your area. There's certain things you can turn on and off and they're there for you to turn on and off. So you can't hurt your computer by enabling that stuff. But for the ones who are really concerned about the utmost privacy, you wanna turn all of those things off. Now I know what you're gonna say is, hey, isn't there deep loading programs out there and scripts that you can download that just do all of this stuff automatically? Yeah, actually there is. And I've been evaluating a few of them. And when I have decided that one script is absolutely the simplest, easiest way to completely strip Microsoft out of your Windows experience, I'm gonna make a video about that and I'll put it over here. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.